be used as a knife. You can like write your faults. Yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah, it could be a cheat sheet. It could be a hair clip. Mm -hmm. It could be a lot of things. But what is it really? It's whatever you want it to be. It's whatever you want it to be. So if I call it a pen, where is the penness coming from? When I, the penness from you. It's coming from me. And if the dog calls it a chew toy, where is it coming from? It's coming from the dog. So does the nature of the reality of this, of this whatever it is, object, come from the object or from the perceiver? The perceiver. The perceiver. Yeah, that's perfect. That's um, so ghost. Um, uh, any any paranormal thing. Where is it coming from? Same thing. It's coming from the. Perceivers. It's not coming from the object itself. It's coming from the perceiver. And that's the essence of what Tibetan Buddhism Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a little bit of it. Thank you. There's a little bit more. Uh, in fact, psychology would say that Every single object in the universe, including pens, desks, whatever you might call them, can be labeled in more than one way, not just in one way. And, again, and that's because there's different realities coming from the person, uh, the perspective. Another way to say this is there is no subjective, there is no objective reality. There is only a subjective reality. And so uh, Buddhism would say that everything has two realities. The, the ultimate or the real reality of everything, including ourselves, including the pen or whatever you want to call it, is it's just available. This thing is just full of potential. A person, the Buddha, uh, the desk, it's just full of potential. It's, it's ultimate nature, it's real nature. It's, it's full of potential. It's interpretable. It's, the world is coming this way, not this way. But it's, it's, it's deceptive and deceptive because everybody's going to have a different, may have a different, there's a potential to have a different perspective. Is it's deceptive, it's bogus. Bogus in that it's not ultimate. It's, it's whatever we label it. Okay? Um, so uh, what's the ultimate nature of a ghost or a witch or a goblin or anything paranormal? It's that it is available. It's interpretable. It's deceptive reality is what I mean to call it. Everything has those two realities. But that doesn't mean things aren't real. So we don't want to fall off the cliff of nothing exists. I'm just in my head. And you know, there's no taxi that's going to hit me if I step out in the middle of the road. That's nihilism. I live in my head. And it's not that everything exists the way I see it. And that's its ultimate nature. It exists without me interpreting. We don't want to fall off that cliff. In fact, if you can get this, this is the essence. It exists because I perceive it a certain way. Um, and it's true for everything. It's true for, you know, take a glass of wine. It's, to some people, it's poison. It kills them. You know, they're, they're gone. To some people, it's holy. To some people, it's just a casual drink. Some people hate it, can't drink it. Some people like it. My neighbor next door is the same way. He's interpretable. To me, he's the best guy in the world. To other people, he's uh, an evil man. Nobody likes him on the street. He's just available. He's just the object who is interpretable. The world is coming from me instead of at me. So um, you're, you're the one who interprets in the end. Tibetan Buddhism is experiential. It's your reality. You, you are the one who's in control. And the good news is things are not fixed. 
and unchangeable. They are interpretable and changeable and malleable, which makes things, that's the good news. That's the miracle, is that things can change. They aren't fixed, and you're never stuck. They're always interpretable. You can take an experience that might be a problem, and you can turn it into a growth opportunity, something that makes you grow, but a teaching. Afterwards, you're welcome to take anything on the table. Absolutely. Okay. And Shuri, your turn. Thank you. Since uh, you get to speak to one, I can take your time. Right? <laughs> 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 um, well, uh, I have to greet you with a good news, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. That's how, how, how we start. Uh, and I will make it a little bit difficult. I'm going to start marching around here. Okay. Elizabeth, so could you turn off the projector? It's shining on his face. Yes. He has rainbows. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, well, I, well, I teach at Shonar, so I, I learned that if you stay at one location, the students will actually go to fall asleep, so you can actually go back, back, back and forth and see the, the eyes can go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Muslims? We don't believe in ghosts. Okay. However, we believe in the unseen. Okay, now, what does that mean? Uh, the ghost, with the definition that this is the spirit of somebody died and come back and have business on earth, we don't believe in that. Once somebody dies, the spirit goes somewhere and will be resurrected at the end. No, it will not come back to the, to the body until there is the day of judgment. However, like the Jews and Christianity, we actually believe in three creatures. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God created three creatures. The first one is actually the angels. And the angels are created from light. Well, let me back up a little bit. Our sources, we believe in the Quran and the Sunnah. The Sunnah that means the sayings, the dealings, and the actions of our Prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so whatever is in the Quran that we believe that this is the word of God, that this is this is our reference, and if we and whatever is not found in that Quran will be found in the in the Sunnah. So ours is that we, these are the only two sources that we're that we're taking our uh, information from. So back 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 to the creations, we believe that the three creatures, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala or creation, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created angels, the creation from light, and they have. They don't have free will. They are obligated to listen to Allah's command. Do this, do that. They're there just to worship Him, and that's it. And there are two creations human being, ourselves, and we are created from clay. And the third creation is actually what's called the jinn, which is the creation from fire. The jinn is actually the unseen. They are living amongst ourselves, living here. They have families. They marry. They die. They reproduce exactly like us. They have the free will like us too. They choose. They have good gin and bad gin. They have. Uh, they can believe in God. They don't believe in God. They will be judged exactly, exactly like us. Now. Those gens, because we don't see them, they actually part of what's happening. They, you will have different scholars who tell you whether, well, the scholars mean the high ranking people in our religion that, that can interpret the, the Quran and so on. They, can, they differ between whether a, a jinn can, can possess a human being and can actually hurt him or not. We, we have a different uh, interpretation about that. But there is an entire chapter in the Quran on the jinn itself. And, and jinn is not really jinn in Arabic, well, Arabic is called jinn, and jinn means the unseen, or the, the Arabic root is actually the unseen or the, <coughs> or the hidden. But like a uh, genie, like we, we all know what is genie. But it's not, it's not like that. They are creations that we don't see. Now they are so powerful. They can, some of them they have wings, some of them don't. 
Some of them can have can possess shapes and, 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 and appear to us and so on. They are living with us. In fact, we are Muslims. We are we used to say we have to say some things. For example, the majority will be, let's say, in your bathroom. So we say a dua, we say a supplication as you enter your uh, bathroom to make sure that there is no jinn in there. They're actually living with us. Mm. And we and this is not this that's actually well nothing wrong with that. And you just have to cook. Right. Now, Satan is a jinn. And he was actually a good jinn. He believed in jinn. That's why we that's why the is actually he was he was in paradise when he was kicked out. Right. But he was a jinn, he was not an angel. Angels cannot have the can, cannot refuse a command from Allah. Jinn can even human, human beings can. Uh, what's gonna to happen to us after well after we die? We have a differentiation. We don't there's a difference between a spirit and a soul. And in the Quran, there are three types of souls, but the spirit, no one knows anything about it, because it comes, comes from, from Allah. Even people came to the Prophet Muhammad and they asked him about the spirit as a test, because they knew that no one can even answer that. And they said, uh, they told somebody, if he answered that, that means, he's, that means he's not a prophet. But if he doesn't answer that, that means he is a prophet, because no one knows, knows the answer. So the Prophet said, well, I don't know, but wait, we'll see, uh, because the revelation will come. <laughs> so he actually, the revelation came, and it says that if they ask you about the, about the spirit, say this is something from Allah no one will ever know about. It says in the Quran that this is right that we know. Because it comes from Allah. How about, well, how about the soul, our soul? There are three types of souls. There's people that, uh, <coughs> my soul is the one that's telling me how I have to do this bad thing. Oh, I have to smoke this cigarette, or I have to do this. Huh? That's that's the soul. The spirit will never do something, anything bad because it's coming from.